name is Erika uh, Melek Delgado. I am a postdoc fellow, a uh, Lady Hume fellow here at King's College London in UK. And I have been here for now two years. I got this grant of three years research for write a book about liberated African children in Sierra Leone, Cuba and Brazil. It's like an, a narrative of their lives and a comparative um, a study on childhood, on African childhood in, in Brazil, in Cuba and in Sierra Leone. So uh, for, for, for develop this project, I have been working on the creation of a database called um, uh, Historical African Childhood. And this is a database in reality. It's a brand, uh, it's a branch from uh, the database that I have been directing for a longer time that's called Freedom Narratives. So Freedom Narratives it's the, is the work that came from my previous postdoc that I did with Professor Paul Lovejoy at York University, Canada. Lovejoy and I, uh, in 2008, uh, developed the methodology to create this project called Freedom Narratives. That is a project that he had in his mind for quite a while. And um, in 2008, we had funding coming from Michigan State University from a project called Enslaved that they funded like seven different projects to help them to think about their methodology for this big digital managed project they were creating. So for the narrative was, was born before that, but had kind of the body started to exist during that time where we could meet with other people thinking digitally managed projects and create how we could navigate uh, information on people's life uh, based on the on the on the database in a, in a digital format, we had database created by historians before thinking data such as um, vessels um, content that we are talking about people, but they took they treated more about like numbers. We had database as well related to uh, plantations. And then we need to remember all the time when you talk about those, those databases, we're talking about people, but they are always treated as content. So what Freedom Narrative thought that we literally lead to lead a way to think that data in a different way. So we will be talking about data, but we are talking mostly about people. So for Freedom Narratives, when we launched the first version uh, on this, on on the end of 2018, we had the support of, of Michigan State University uh, on the way that we could think that our idea to, of, 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 of having a database that was the, car, the core of the database, the heart of the database was the events of people's life was possible. So we, we proved that concept, we thought like, great, we could do it. But like, we felt that we needed a little bit more Kind of a different technology to develop it. So we finish our our partnership with Michigan State University. They are part of our history. We're very we really appreciate that. But we started to work direct with like a person that could develop through narratives the way that we wanted. So we start to work with Kartike Shanda, that he, he is uh, at the moment a postdoctor um, candidate at the McGill University in Canada. And Kartike, how, uh, with Kartike's uh, knowledge and our methodology, we were able to create, first of all, a portal where we could enter the data because previously the data was entered like in the Excel sheets <laughs> and sent it to, 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 to Michigan to enter the data like in, a, in our website. So now our our, our format of entering data is completely different. We have like intelligent portal where, where it was created based in the way that we wanted to look at that data. So for freedom narratives, the person is the, is the most important like um, element, but it's just not the person's in itself, but it's the person's life. And when we talk about life, we talk about the events that this person lived. So, as for the narrative, is not a database on names. We are not, we are not able to enter everybody we know that existed. So, if I knew that someone existed and the name was John, 
I can't enter through the, him, this person through the narratives because I need to know a little bit more about John. So uh, for through the narratives, our basic idea is that this person needs to have five events. So we can see some movement in their lives to be able to really talk about this person. And these five events, sometimes people think like, oh, this is too much, you know, like, especially because I don't know if I made this clear, but through the narrative is about people that were enslaved. So there was, so, so we, our, we are interested in to talk about people that were enslaved from, from the era we call the electronic slave trade. So, for, so from the 16th, so the 15th, 17th century to the end of the 19th century. And, uh, and, the, and a lot of people think that we don't have enough information from that. But what the narratives brings is like, you need to have a specific methodology to work with the data. So for some people, we have amazing information written because they wrote their own biography, like Eduard Edu Quiano, or we have um, uh, information wrote on, on, on journals or that, that brings a little bit more detail. But when we talk about the 12.5 million of people that were enslaved and traded from, from Africa to Americas, we know that we're not going to have an autobiography from the 12.5 million. So we needed to open our eyes to different kinds of sources. So what we re realized that if we make the correct questions to the sources, a lot of information can be extracted from. So for the narratives, we had these five events, as I said. So they can be the day that, uh, like the year that the person was born, if you have like a, an average idea when they were born, you can have um, the, when they were enslaved, because we're talking about the enslaved person, you're sure that they were enslaved. You, if this person was a West African person and they end up, for instance, in Bahia, in Brazil, we know that this person embarked in a vessel and disembarked from a vessel. And if this person is an enslaved person in Brazil, we know this person was sold. So you have read five events. Yeah. So that five event it's easier to be able to grasp if you make the correct questions. Maybe you don't have the exact information. Well, maybe we don't know that this person was born the 25th of June of 1875. Yeah, maybe we don't know that information. But I don't think that it's enough to blank this person from, from the knowledge of the world that this person existed. At the same time, we cannot... Um, be so um, keen to just have like details and uh, and uh, we're just going to record everybody that I have every every information from or not too broad that I'm going to record information of every person I heard that it was a name about it so it's when we are sure that this person really exists in a way so this is like the basic methodology to enter through the narratives data and uh, when we was able to do that we thought okay now we need to move on so with current K, we started to think about formats to bring this data in la alive. So because again, we are talking about the database, this data sometimes can be treated a lot as a number. And uh, this is where we want to move from. Uh, until now, uh, very good research has been done and it's extremely necessary to try to quantify the number of people that were trade and and they became enslaved and they were and it was moved from a part of the world to another part those those projects is incredibly important but we see still that if you still deal with these people it's just number we are again treated them as a commodity and it's what we are trying to move from so when we are able to to organize the events of this person's life we also wanted to be able to inform exactly areas, geographic areas, where that event happened. So uh, on the same time we are discussing about uh, events, we are trying to uh, organize at the same time information about geographic areas in Africa that for historian has been for a long time trying to find out information from. On the same time, we are discussing one thing that in the narratives we call uh, ethnonym slash language, that it's what is what this person how this person was identified was this person identified as a Hausa person was this person identified as a Timuni person and uh, we don't say that this is an ethnonym because we, we the data most of the data we work with is data that was collected by a third person so for instance I'm Brazilian but 
if you get a data from me and then say like a data I'm speaking in English, you can maybe in the future think that Erika Melek Dogad was a British person because she was in London and she spoke in English. But it is not true. English is one of the languages that I speak. So the same is for the people that were enslaved at that time. If you someone if you ask someone in English how it's a name, the person if they're in UK they go it's responded to you in English. And if you are in Brazil and you ask someone in Yoruba uh, their name, and if this person can speak Yoruba, they're going to respond in Yoruba. The, what is the name? This means that this person is from, is from the Yoruba land, or this means this person can speak Yoruba. So we need to remember that we're talking about people that had they were multilingual. So that 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 specific information on language and ethnicity needs to come together because we are unable really sometimes to to say if the person spoke Yoruba or if the person was a Yoruba.